Well, let's uh, begin our practice now. Find a comfortable seated position. Any seated position on the mat is fine. And sit up nice and tall. Let your eyes close down. And just bring awareness to the whole body, breathing in and breathing out. Try not to focus on any particular aspect of the breathing process. Just witness the whole process, the whole flow of the breath in and out, the body as it reacts, how your mind interfaces with the breath. And just allow yourself to be consumed with the whole process of breathing. Now see if instead of forcing your mind, your awareness, to pay attention to the breath, you can allow your breath to consume your whole awareness so that awareness just attaches to the breath and notices without being forced into it. So let your body surrender, your mind rather, surrender into the breathing process. As you do that, notice that your body begins to relax. It begins to settle into the process of breathing as well. Maybe feel any tension that exists in your body begin to melt away, floating away with each exhale. Now again, without force and without straining, let your breath begin to lengthen. Let it begin to deepen. So that perhaps instead of breathing in and out for four counts or five, you're breathing in and out for six counts or maybe even seven or even eight if you can do that without straining, without forcing it. Continue to follow the breath, paying attention to the whole process. Letting the breath naturally lengthen. Letting the process of breathing serve as a calming influence. Noticing the gentleness of the breath. Find two more breaths now. Lots of length in the breath. And then let go. I'm going to practice uh, something we haven't done very much. By the way, this is Jack. You're seeing his backside. Turn around, Jack. Show the people your face. There you go. All right. We're going to practice now alternate, no or sorry, not alternate nostril breathing, what's called bumblebee breath or Brahmari breath in Sanskrit. To do that, we're going to plug the uh, ears a little bit with the thumbs, and then we're going to bring the other fingers, the four fingers on both hands, to the forehead. Now plug the ears just enough so that you can still hear me, and what we're going to do is take a deep breath in, and then on the exhale, we're going to hum, just like a bumblebee would hum. And as we do that, begin to feel the vibratory effects of the humming. So go ahead, take a deep breath in. Now press the little flaps on the ears a bit. And then as you exhale, hum. 
Now let it go. Just feel the vibrations, particularly in the skull, but maybe rotating out through the rest of the body. You can keep your eyes closed. It'll intensify the sensation a bit. Let's do that one more time. Take a deep breath in and hum. Mm -hmm. And let it go. Just stay with the vibration. Now let the vibrations recede. You can release your hands down, palms on knees. Now breathe in deeply, let your spine lengthen, keep the chin level. Now drop the right ear towards the right shoulder and then relax, or sorry, yeah, the right shoulder and, drop, and relax the left shoulder. Let me say that again. Right ear towards right shoulder, or relax the left shoulder. Feel that stretch on the left side of the neck. Keep the gaze forward. Now release your left hand and hover the fingertips on that left hand just a couple of inches off the mat and reach with the fingertips and notice if that doesn't increase the sensation on the left side of the neck. Reach out just a little bit more with that left hand, with the fingers on the left hand, and then bring the left hand back to the knee. Let your uh, head come back to center and then over the other side, right ear towards right shoulder. Begin to feel a stretch on the right side of the neck, then relax the right shoulder. That probably deepens the sensations on the right side. And now release the right hand out, hover the fingertips a few inches above the mat, and then stretch with the fingertips and reach your head off so that the top of the head, the crown of the head is reaching in the opposite direction of the fingertips on the right hand and stretch it out. Now lift your chin just a little bit and notice how that affects the sensations on the right side of the neck. And then let it go. Re bring the right hand to the uh, right knee and then slowly lift your head back up. Bring the chin to the chest, rounding the spine. And on an inhale, lift the chin high. Keep your spine long as you do that. Do that again, chin comes towards sternum, and inhale, lift the chin high. As you exhale, level the chin. Now press into the right hand, pressing the right hand into the knee, bring the right shoulder down, see if you can align your upper body with the left thigh, and check in with the shoulders to see if they're level. Now keep pressing with that right hand. Feel a big stretch on the right side of the body. I feel that in my right hip, as well as all the way up the right side of the body. Now slowly drag yourself all the way around over to the left side, pressing into the left palm this time, straightening the left arm, bringing the left shoulder down so that it's level with the right shoulder. And feel that stretch. For me, I'm feeling that in the left hip, a little bit into the left leg as well and of course on the left side of the body. Now, chin to chest, round the spine, draw the navel in as you come up, and then exhale and reach out with the whole body over the left leg. And then pull yourself around, nice long spine as you do that. Now chin to chest, round the spine, and arise up. Let's do that one more time. Over to the left side, long spine, pull yourself around, chin on chest, round the spine to rise. Lift the chin high. Now bring the hands behind you. Press the palms into the mat. Lift the chin as high as you can. Find a back bend, bringing the shoulder blades together. Lean forward so the weight comes off the hands. Let the arms reach up and overhead. And then exhale the hands to heart center. The palms press together. Inhale and reach back up. Exhale the arms out. And then bring the palms down. Press into the right hand. 
bring your body down so that it aligns with that left thigh. Pull yourself around, second time doing this, chin on chest, rounding the spine to rise. Twice more, press into that right hand, pull yourself around over to the right side, pressing in the left hand now, chin on chest, spine rounds. Third and last one on this side, actually the sixth one total, but the third in this series, pull yourself around. Chin on chest, round the spine to rise, reach the arms high, palms together, interlace the fingers, invert the palms and stretch the palms towards the sky. Get tall here and remember to roll back on the sitting bones a little bit and then reach up a little bit more, stretching. Now the arms come out to a T and bring the palms back to the knees, press into that left hand and bring your upper body over that right thigh. And then pull yourself around, spine stays long, chin on chest now, round the spine and rise. And over to the right side, pull yourself around, chin on chest, rounding the spine to rise. We're going to do six all together here. This is the third in this series. And rise, once you're up, reach your arms high and exhale the hands to heart center. Inhale, reach back up, interlace the fingers. Second time here, seated palm tree pose, press through the palms, press the sitting bones down. Draw the navel in a little bit and roll back on the sitting bones. Do you feel that as you engage the back of the sitting bones? Now the arms come out to a T and bring the hands down, palms on thighs. And last time over to the right side or last in the th series of three, pull yourself around to the left. Chin on chest, round the spine to rise. Twice more over to the right side. Pull yourself around, press into that right palm, chin on chest, rounding the spine to rise. This is the last one. Over to the right side, pull yourself around. Chin on chest, rounding the spine, rise up, reach your arms high. And a big exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, reach back up and then out to a T. Palms face down, reach the hands apart from one another. Let's take a twist to the right and bring the right hand down behind. Left hand to the uh, knee on the right side. And now look over your right shoulder. Breathe deeply and press both sitting bones into the mat. Now, fingers on that right hand, if you can, pointing to the left. And press that right palm down into the mat. Breathe in deeply. Spine lengthens even a little bit more. And then let it go. Back to center and then to the other side. Right hand to left knee. Left hand down behind. Now twist and look over your left shoulder. As you breathe in, let your spine get longer. And as you exhale, see if there's just a bit more space for twisting. We'll do that one more time. Deep breath in and exhale. Explore the space for twisting to the left and then let it go. We're back to center now. Reach the arms high and the heart center. Two breaths. Breathe in deeply. And let the breath go. And one more deep breath in. And let it go. Roll over the knees now. Bring the hands down in front. Let's find all fours. Table pose. And for this one, we're going to have the hands right under the shoulders. Sometimes we have the hands forward of the shoulders. But here, I want the hands right under the shoulders and the knees right under the hips. Now, cow pose. Dropping your belly. Lift your chin as high as you can. And then exhale into cat pose. Bringing your chin to your chest. Lift your navel up. Press your forehead down towards the mat. Now inhale to cow. And a big exhale into cat pose. Press the middle of the back towards the sky. Twice more. Inhale to cow. And exhale to cat. And one more time. Inhale to cow. And exhale to cat. Now bring it back to a neutral spine and pause. Now, straighten your left leg. Tuck the toes on the left foot. Keep pressing into the palms as well as the fingertips. The left leg is nice and straight. Now, press back on that left heel until you create a stretch in the back of the uh, left calf. And you may feel that stretch move into the back of the left knee even if you're pushing enough. Now, pivot on the right knee, bringing the right foot to the right side of the mat. Bring the left heel down to the mat, and then anchor into the pinky toe of the left foot. 
As you do that, reach with the left hand, we're on the right hand, and we've come into a supported side plank pose. Stretch it out as you press into the pinky toe of the left foot, reach through the fingertips of the left hand. Now slowly bring that left hand down, pivot on that right knee, bring the left knee back and we're back to all fours, inhale to cow pose, and exhale to cat. We'll do that twice more, inhale to cow pose, and a big exhale to cat, and one more, inhale to cow, and exhale to cat, and come back to a neutral spine. And then over to the other side. So straighten the right leg and press back on the right heel. And press pretty vigorously into the hands. Anchor the fingertips and the tips of the thumbs so that you can really push back on that right heel. Do you feel that stretch in the back of the right ankle? Maybe moving into the back of that right knee. I'm going to move over to the other side. Flip around so you can see this. Now pivot on the left knee, bringing that left foot to the right side of your mat. Then bring the right heel down to the mat. Keep the left hand anchored and reach up and out ahead with the right hand, pressing into that right foot. Notice my right foot is flat on the mat. I'm anchored in the pinky toe of the right foot. Now stretch it out. Feel that stretch in the shoulder on the right side. Now bring the right hand down, we're back to all fours. Inhale to cow pose, and exhale to cat. Twice more, inhale to cow, and exhale to cat one more time. Inhale to cow, and exhale to cat. And then bring it back to a neutral spine. Then from there, keep the right hand on the mat, reach the left foot, or sorry, reach the right foot back, and reach the left hand forward into table extension pose. We'll warm up the core a little bit. Keep reaching the top of the head forward towards where you're pointing with the fingertips on the left hand. Keep pressing back through the right heel, and if you want, you can then point the toes on the right foot, creating a little bit more length in the body. Stretch it out, just two more breaths. Breathe in and out. And one more, big deep breath in. And on the exhale, bring the elbow towards the knee, round the spine, dip the head down, and then reach it back out. Do that twice more. Elbow comes towards knee, spine rounds, and reach it back out. And one more, elbow towards knee, and stretch it out, and then bring the hand and the knee to the mat at the same time. Over to the other side now. Reach the right hand forward, press the left foot back, press through the heel to begin. Reach the fingertips forward. Now reach the crown of the head towards the direction that your fingers on that right hand are pointing. Now stretch. Now point the toes on the left foot. Stretch it out. Two more breaths now. Breathe in deeply. And breathe out. Feel the core engage, the shoulders and the left leg. One more deep breath. On the exhale, bring the elbow towards the knee, rounding the spine, moving slowly, and then reach back out. And again, elbow towards knee, spine rounds, and exhale and reach back out. One more time, elbow comes towards knee, feel the crunch, and exhale, stretch it out, and bring the hand and the knee to the mat. Now press the heels back towards, or sorry, the hips back towards the heels, stretch it out. On an inhale, rise back up. Then tuck your toes and lift your hips. And let's find our very first downward facing dog. Press the heels down towards the mat. Feel lots of length in the spine, pressing the hands into the mat. On an inhale, reach the right leg up, but not too high, and then step it forward. So the right foot ends up between the hands. Step the left foot forward now so that the left foot meets the right foot and find a forward fold. In the forward fold, let your head drop down. We're gonna find three breaths. Breathing in, and breathing out, and breathing in, and breathing out. One more big deep breath, and exhale, let it go. Let's do one more breath. Breathe in. 
and out. Now, make sure you're at the front of your mat. Let your head drop down. Bring the arms out to a T. Press into both feet and slowly begin to rise. Notice the spine stays long. Feel that in the hamstrings and maybe the glutes. And extend the hands to heart center. Feel the breath linking up. Back bend now. Bring the palms together. Reach the elbows up. Inhale. Up to a T. Swan dive. Forward fold. Come to a half lift now with the hands at the top of the shins. The spine is long and parallel to the mat. As you exhale, bring the hands down to the mat. Step the left foot back. Runner's lunge. Right knee is bent about 90 degrees. Now keep pressing the palms into the mat. Step the right foot back to plank pose. Take a breath. As you exhale, bring the knees to the mat, chest and chin flows into a rear way into cobra pose. Remember the elbows tucked in close to the body. Take a breath. As you exhale, release all the way down. Tuck your toes now, push to plank, and then lift your hips. Downward facing dog, stretch it out. On an inhale, left leg rises, not too high. Step the left foot forward. Right foot follows, forward fold. Arms out to a T, press into the front of the feet so the weight comes forward and slowly rise. Nice long spine. Bring the palms together and heart On an inhale, Still the arms to a T, swan dive, forward fold, half lift again, hands to the top of the shins, and exhale, fold forward. Left foot stays between the hands, right foot steps back. Left foot steps back now to meet it in the plank pose. Check in with your alignment. Make sure the hips are in line with the shoulders and the heels. One more breath. On the exhale, bring the knees to the mat, chest and chin follow, turn your way into our second cobra pose, lifting the heart up off the mat. Take a breath. And one more, settle into the pose. As you exhale, release down, then toes tuck, push to plank, and lift your hips in, downward facing dog, stretch it out. Lots and lots of length in the spine, feel that in the back of the legs. On an inhale, right leg rises, again, not too high. Right foot steps forward now between the hands. Left foot follows into a forward fold. Let your head drop down. Now chin on chest, rounding the spine as you rise. Once you're up, reach your arms high. And exhale the heart center and breathe. Back knees a little deeper back bend than the last two. In and swan dive forward fold. Come to another half lift. Exhale the hands to the mat. Step the left foot back. Right foot stays forward between the hands. Now bring the left knee to the mat. Reach the arms up and overhead into a left knee forward. Down on either side of the right foot. Toes tuck as the left knee comes off the mat. Right foot steps back. Plank pose. Knees to the mat. Chest and chin follow. Inchworm your way. Cobra pose. It's our third cobra pose. A little deeper cobra pose this time. Pressing the navel forward as you can. If you can. Pressing the pubic bone down. One more breath. Now come all the way down. Toes tuck, stiffen your body as you push to plank, and lift your hips into downward facing dog. Stretch it out. Press the palms into the mat. Press the fingertips into the mat. Press your heels down so you feel that stretch in the back of the legs. On an inhale, left leg rises. Step the left foot forward so it ends up between the hands. Now bring your right knee to the mat. Reach the arms up and overhead into a low crescent lunge. Side, press the left knee forward. 
Now lift your gaze up so you're looking towards the hand. The chin is lifting up towards the sky. Breathe. And then release the hands down on either side of the left foot. Toes tuck. Bring the right knee off the mat. Right foot steps forward now. Forward fold. Let your head drop down. Arms come out to a T. Press into the front of the feet as you rise. Draw your arms high. Palms there. And the heart center. Drive to the side. And fold forward. Hands down to the mat. This time, right foot steps back. The left foot stays forward. That left knee is bent about 90 degrees. Bring the right knee to the mat. Reach the arms high. Just bring hands behind you and release your fingers behind your back. Press your knuckles towards your right heel. Lift your chest up towards the sky. Feel the shoulder blades coming together on the back. Breathe. One more breath. Release the hands now. Reach. And then bring them down. Tuck the toes. Right knee off the mat. Left knee, or left foot rather, steps back. Plank pose. Now three breaths. Breathe in. And out. And in. And out. Keep pressing the hands into the mat, feeling your shoulders rise. One more breath. Breathe in and out. Now vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana, upward facing dog this time. Knees are off the mat and downward or in upward dog. Then when you're ready, toes tuck and hips rise, downward dog. Stretch it out. On an inhale, right leg rises. Lift it up nice and high this time. Press the left heel down and step the right foot forward so it ends up between the hands. Bring the left knee to the mat, reach the arms high into our fourth low press one, second one on this side. This time you can come behind you and release the fingers. You can do it in the awkward way if you like. Press the knuckles towards that left heel. Press that right knee forward and lift your chin. Breathe. One more. Release the hands. And bring the hands down to the mat. Toes tuck as the left knee comes off the mat. Step the left foot forward, forward fold. Bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers. Let the head drop down. Reach the knuckles up high. Forward if you're able to. Bring more weight into the front of the feet. And slowly come up. Nice and slow so you feel the engagement in the core. Once you're up, pause, press the knuckles towards the heels, bring the shoulder blades together. Let it go. Release the hands now, reach them high, and then bring the hands to heart center. We're going to do tree pose next. Weight transfers to the left foot. Bring the right foot up, sole the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. If that's too much for you, bring the big toe of the right foot to the mat and the right heel to the ankle. Palms together, the right knee pressing to the right, whichever form of the pose you're in. Now breathe. Feel the balance. Remember, this pose is all about experiencing balance, nothing else. Let go of any sensation of ego, any need to achieve anything. And that's it. Release the right foot down. Take a breath. Pull the left foot to the inside of the right thigh, or if you want, that big toe on the left foot on the mat and the left heel on the right ankle. Palms together, left knee to the Tree pose. Just experience fast. Try not to struggle. Try not to fight. One more breath. Reach the arms high. 
and exhale the hands to heart center, palms press together. Leave the hands there as you hinge at the hips. Notice my spine is nice and long. Eventually bring the hands down to the mat and then come up on fingertips and bring your hands in front of your left foot about 14 inches. Then press the right foot straight back, toes pointing down so your hips are level. Keep pressing back through that right heel, about a 90 degree angle between your left leg and your right leg. Now half moon pose. Keep the left hand on the mat. Keep pressing in the left foot and reach the right hand up and overhead. Eventually see if you can stack your right hip over your left hip so the toes on the right foot point to the right. Keep pressing back through that right heel. If you want more energy in the pose, reach the left hand forward with the palm facing down, staying grounded in that left foot. We'll make the pose a bit more energetic. And then eventually bring your right hand down to the mat, level the hips, and then let your head drop down, bringing the forehead close to the ankle or shin of that left leg. This is standing splits. Reach the right leg up and overhead, lots of sensation in the back of the left leg. Now bring the right foot down, bring the arms out to a T, press into the front of the feet and slowly begin to rise. Come all the way up, reach the arms high, and then to heart center. Take a breath. Now hinge hips and fold forward, spine stays long. Eventually bring the hands to the mat and then walk the hands forward about 14 inches in front of that right foot so that your left hand and your right hand are about shoulder width apart and centered 14 inches or so in front of the right foot. Transfer all the weight to the right foot. Press the left heel straight back so the toes point down. Your hips are level. Now bring most of the weight into the right foot. Sorry, into the right hand. Your weight's already on the right foot, isn't it? And let's find half moon pose. Right hand stays on the mat. Left hand reaches high, pressing into that right foot. Open up the hips to the left so that eventually the toes point to the left. Keep pressing into the ball of that right foot. Reach that left hand high. And just as we did on the other side, if you want more energy in the pose, reach that left hand forward, pressing in the opposite direction of the left foot. Eventually bring the left hand down to the mat, level your hips, and then um, standing splits. Bring the forehead down towards the ankle of that right foot and reach the left leg up. Now bring the left foot down so it meets the right foot. Let your head drop down. Now arms out to a T with the palms facing down. Press into the front of the feet and rise slowly, coming all the way up. Reach up high. And then exhale to heart center. Let your eyes close down and breathe. Two more breaths. Breathing in and out. Keep it going, deep breath in and out. On an inhale, reach back up and bring the hands behind you, place the fingers behind the back, press the knuckles towards the heels, shoulder blades come together, hinge at the hips, fold forward, reach the knuckles high. Release the hands now, bring them to the mat. Step the left foot back, right foot stays forward. We're in runner's lunge with that right knee bent about 90 degrees. Now leave the left hand on the mat, reach the right hand, stretch it up. This is a lunge twist. Now the right hand comes down to the inside of the right foot, left hand reaches high. We're still on the ball of that left foot. Now spin the left heel to the mat, anchor into the pinky toe of the left foot, right knee stays bent, rise warrior two. This is our first warrior two of the practice. See if you can bend your right knee a little bit more. One more breath. Upward warrior now, left hand drops down, right hand reaches high. Notice my upper body is still straight up and down. Now extended side angle pose, bringing my right elbow to the knee. I'm reaching with the left hand. 
long straight line is what we're working towards between the fingertips of the left hand and the pinky toe of the left foot. Stretch it out just a little bit more. As you inhale, rise to warrior two. Notice the right leg stays straight. It hasn't moved. Now a reverse warrior pose. Reach the right hand up and back. The knee is still bent, that right knee. Now straighten the right knee and reach up and back into a reverse triangle pose. Now the arms come out to a T. Take a breath, relax the upper body. Press in the left foot. Reach the right hand forward and let's find triangle pose. Spine is long. What we're working towards is bringing the spine parallel to the mat. Just do your best. You can support that right hand on the ankle or the foot or the shin. Breathe. Head still reaching forward. Head staying in a nice neutral position. One more breath. Now bend the right knee. Bring the hands down on either side of the right foot. We're back to runner's lunge. Step the right foot back to plank pose. Take a breath. Now flow through a vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, upward facing dog. Two more breaths. One more. And then tuck the toes and hips rise, downward facing dog. Stretch it out. Lots of length in the spine. On an inhale, left leg rises, lift it up nice and high. And then step the left foot forward so it comes between the hands. Keep the right hand on the mat, reach the left hand high, lunge twist. Press that right palm down, reach up through the left hand, bend that left knee just a bit more. And then bring the left hand down to the inside of the left foot. Reach the right hand high as we come into our revolved lunge twist. I'm still up on the ball of my right foot and the right leg is nice and straight. Now spin the right heel to the mat, anchor into the pinky toe of that right foot. So you've got to roll the ankle towards the back of the mat a little bit. And then keep the left knee bent as you come up into warrior two. Upper body nice and vertical. Take a breath. Now upward warrior, right hand drops down, left hand reaches high. Keep pressing that left knee forward. You're gonna feel that in the quadricep muscles on that left leg. Now extended side angle pose, elbow comes to knee, reach with the right hand. Work on that long straight line through the fingertips, down the arm to the armpit, down the right side of the body to the hip, and from the hip all the way to the pinky toe of that right foot. Rise to warrior two, left knee stays bent. Now reverse warrior, reaching the left hand up and back. Left knee is still bent, stretch it out. Now straighten the left leg, reverse triangle pose, reach up and back with the left hand, take a breath, draw your navel in a little bit. Now the arms come out to a T, press into the right foot, reach the left hand forward, Drop it down, triangle pose, tree kanasana. Spine is long, and remember what we're working towards is bringing the spine to a place where it's, vert where it's, hor where it's horizontal. That's confusing, vertical and horizontal. Where it's parallel to the mat. One more breath. Now slowly begin to left, bend the left knee, bring the right hand down. Come up onto the ball of the right foot, and then step the left foot back to plank pose. Three breaths now. Press the palms into the mat. <sighs> Two more breaths like that. <sighs> and one more. Now, vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana, upward facing dog. Three breaths, upward dog. Full and complete breaths. Pressing the navel and the heart forward, bring the shoulder blades a little closer together on the back. Knees off the mat if you can. Then when you're ready, bring the knees to the mat. Toes come together, the big toes, and child's pose. Forehead comes down to the mat. Breathe. Walk your hands forward a little bit so you feel a stretch in the upper part of the back.
Now slowly begin to rise from child's pose. Bring your knees together. Not together, actually, just about hip width apart. And palms to thighs. Elbows tucked in nice and close to the body. Spine is lengthening as you breathe in. And let it go. Do that one more time. Let's come up on the knees now. Reach the arms up and overhead. And then bring the left leg out. So the toes on the left foot point towards the uh, uh, front of your space. And then anchor into the pinky toe of the left foot. This is gate pose. Left hand drops down to the uh, outside of that left leg. Right hand reaches high to begin. Notice my hand is over my shoulder on the right side. Shoulder is over the hip and the hip is over the knee. Now reach the right hand up and over, but without compressing the ribs on the left side of the body. So that we're creating a stretch on the whole right side without compressing the left side of the body. Now the arms come out to a T. Press through the palms, fingers pointing up, and then bring the right hand down to the mat. This is the second time with a supported uh, side plank pose. Reach with the left hand. If you want to, you can bring that right foot to the top of the left foot into a full side plank, reaching with the left hand. Stretch it out. Two more breaths, whichever version of side plank you're in, either supported or not. Now reach the left hand up, left, right knee rather comes back to the mat if it was lifted and slowly rise back up. Let's come into a second gate pose on this side, left hand down to the knee and reach with the right hand, stretching the right side and then slowly come back up. Reach both hands up and overhead, palms together to heart center, bend the left knee, let the hips turn the heels, palms to thighs, breathe. This is hero pose. Virasana. How many times have you heard me say that? One more breath. Reach both arms up and overhead. Come up on the knees. Knees about hip width apart. Let's bring the right leg out. Straighten the right leg. Anchor into the pinky toe of the right foot. Right hand comes down to the outside of the right leg. Reach up high with the left hand. Checking with your alignment again. Left knee below left hip. Left hip below left shoulder left shoulder below left hand. Now reach the left hand up and over, but stay long on the right side of the body. Feel that stretch on the left side. On an inhale, rise slowly, core engages, press through the heels of the hands. The fingers are pointing up. For most people, that creates a lot of tingling in the fingertips of the right hand. Now with control, bring the left hand down to the mat. Right hand is reaching up. Spread the fingers wide, reach with the right hand. This is the supported version of side plank. If you want, you can pick that left foot up and bring it to the top of the right foot for a full side plank. Reach through the right hand, really stretch it out. We could stay here for days, couldn't we? One more breath. Actually, let's take two more breaths. And one more. Reach the right hand back up, bring the left knee down if you'd lifted it up, and slowly rise all the way back up. And into our second gate pose on this side, reaching the left hand up and over. Try and keep the right side of the body long, the right side of the upper body. Draw the navel in a little bit, and then release. Reach both hands up and overhead, palms together. Bring them to heart center in the right knee. And then back to hero pose, palms on thighs. Breathe. And one more. Well, good work, everybody. We finally made it down to the uh, mat again. So we're going to come to a seated position. Remember, there are two ways to do that. One, you can bring your hands to the side and let your hips drop over and then swing the legs forward. If you want to be a little bit more energetic than that, you can lean forward, bringing the hands right in front of the knees. Cross the ankles behind you, whoops, and then bring the feet forward. That wasn't a very graceful one. Reach the arms high now. Exhale the hands to heart center. Then bring the hands down. Press the palms into the mat. I'm going to turn to give you a side view. Into Dandasana. 
staff pose. Press the palms down straight in the elbows so that you feel a little bit of weight coming off the sitting bones. Your sitting bones probably do not lift up above the mat. Now pull your shoulders back a little bit, check in, make sure that you don't get up. Now three, one, two, three. Now, and exhale, fold forward over the extended legs. Keep the spine as long as you can and bring the forehead down to the knees or the shins. Now lengthen the spine a little bit. Reach the crown of the head towards the feet. Release the feet or the ankles or the shins if you have a hold of something. Reach the fingertips forward. Keep your biceps on either side of your ears and rise. Come all the way back up. And then exhale the hands behind you. Press the palms into them. Fingers towards the toes. And the elbows a little bit. Walk your hands back just a bit so the hands are sort of under the shoulders. Now press the toes and this sort of works. That's it. Release the tailbone to the mat. Reach the arms high. Now bend the right knee. Bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. And then orient your shoulders so the shoulders square to that bent right knee. Now reach both hands up and bring the left hand to the uh, left ankle and reach the right hand up and over at the same time. So that right hand is reaching towards the ankle as well. Maybe you bring the right hand to the right foot, or left foot rather, maybe not. Now slowly rise back up and bring the hands down. Let's go over to the other side. So sole the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Press that right foot away and now square your shoulders towards the bent left knee. Reach the right hand high, and bring the right hand to the foot or the ankle on that right leg. Reach the left hand high, and then stretch the left hand towards that right foot. And maybe you'll be able to bring the left hand to the right foot, maybe not. Don't worry about it. One more breath. Now slowly rise back up. And bring the hands down, bring both legs out. Let's give them a little shake. Slap the back of the knees into the mat or the floor. Now, soles of the feet together. Cup the hands on the outside of the feet, the pinky toe side, and lift the heels up off the mat. I'm going to turn to the side. Lengthening your spine, the heels stay off the mat. Pull the shoulders back. This is a floating Baddha Konasana, a floating cobbler pose. Now, peace fingers to big toes. Ribs, heron pose. Keep the spine nice and long. If you're able to, bend the elbow to the soles of the feet to the mat. Now round your spine. Slowly come down. Don't give up on the pose. So feel each vertebra of the spine as it touches the mat. Feel the deep engagement in the core as you come down. I want to go all the way down, flip the palms so they face down, straighten the legs, and lift the heels to the sky for legs of the wall pose. 
Now relax the back of your shoulders. At the same time, press the tailbone down towards the mat and then point the toes and stretch the toes towards the sky. Keep pressing the tailbone down as you point the toes up even more, lengthening the lower body. Now pull the toes down towards your face. Feel the stretch move into the back of the legs, maybe the hamstrings, maybe the back of the knees, maybe all the way into the calf muscles. Now relax the feet. If you're happy where you are, stay in legs up the wall pose if you want. You move into plow pose, bringing the toes up and overhead. At this point, you can interlace the fingers behind the back if you like, pressing the palms towards one another. Those in plow release, come back to legs up pose. Anchor the tailbone, bend the knees, and bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Prepare for bridge pose. Make sure that your feet are about hip width apart. And then press into the feet and lift the hip. You can bring the hands behind you, interlace the, the fingers behind the back. Press up towards the sky. One more breath. Now release the hands. Slowly bring the tailbone back to the mat. Now hug the knees in. Bring the forehead towards the knees. Maybe touch the forehead to the knees. No. Reach the arms up to the sky. Straighten the legs. Reach the feet up towards the sky. Now reach the hands towards the feet. Bring your shoulders off the mat. And lift your tailbone up a little bit higher. One more breath. As you exhale, lift the palms to the mat, back of the shoulders to the mat, and slowly release the heels all the way down. Once you're there, flip your palms, let your toes flop out, and relax, surrender into Shavasana. Let your eyes close now in Shavasana. Let your breath begin to return to its natural rhythm. And feel a natural surrendering, a natural letting go as you settle into Shavasana, our final resting pose. Keep your awareness on your breath. And return to the flow of the breath. Bring your awareness now to your heartbeat. Find the heart beating in your body wherever you can. Let the heartbeat con consume your entire awareness. so that nothing else can intrude. 100% of awareness on the beating of the heart.
Now let go of the awareness of the heartbeat. And bring your awareness to the very top of your head. Now bring your awareness slowly down from the top of the head all the way through the length of the body to the tips of the toes. On your journey down, find any areas of tension that remain. Just note those areas as you bring your awareness, your attention, down the body to the tips of the toes. And once your attention lands at the tips of the toes, keep it there for a breath. And then bring the awareness back up the body from the tips of the toes to the top of the head. And as you do that, pause at any areas where there's tension. Take a breath. And on the exhale, let the tension go. Just release it. Stay with that process. Releasing tension as awareness rises from the tips of the toes to the top of the head. And once your awareness is returned to the very top of the head, then begin to bend your knees and roll to your side. Once you're on your side, feel free to cradle your head in your arm. Pause there and just pay attention to the experience of resting on your side with your knees bent and your head cradled in your arms. Notice what comes up for you in this position. Thoughts, memories, emotions, sensations. Keeping your eyes closed, slowly come to a seat. And once you find yourself seated, bring your hands to heart center and press the palms together. Now take a deep breath in and then let it go. One more time like that. Breathe in deeply. And let it go. I offer you loving kindness. May you be happy. May you be well and safe. May you be peaceful. And may you be at ease. Namaste.